Hello there, welcome. It's time for one last Turtle Burst Viserai matchup before with part of the mist. Well, unfortunately, this archetype won't be relevant anymore. But for now, we're still playing against KO, a matchup that is somehow favored for Viserai. And I'm gonna explain today uh, why that is the case. So, first of all, Kayo's going um, first here, and he will be able to set up some something for his next turn, that agility and so on. Uh, we, on the other hand, we will we'll get a little rune shan token for ourselves. And basically the first step we have to take in matchups like these with Turtle Burst Visera is establishing at least six rune shans. Um, that way all of our power cards will be enabled um, for basically free. So for example, we have a buff that just doesn't cost anything. Our best attack, Arknight Ascendancy, will come in for um, for zero cost. And also the these cards like Sonata Galaxia don't cost anything and can get us some really strong auras out of our deck. Okay, so with this hand now, uh, we'll, uh, we, we could have gotten more fortunate, but still we will be able to make four rune chance. And that's, that's basically fine with me. Um, the reason I'm not arsenaling the pummel here is because Kaios playing the Scowling Flashback. And if we want to use pummel, we need to keep an extra card in hand when we're attacking him. And since he's inclined to just put all of all of his armor into our first attack anyways, um, we just won't be able to get that pummel out. So instead of that, I'm just looking for a better buff here. And we do find one in this logism. So we will be happy to just block with the other three cards in our hand, Arsenal Slogism, and then we're good to go with the first Arknet Ascendancy we will find this game. So yeah, for now just blocking out. And sure, Kaio can get very strong hands and go above those 12 damage turns. Um, for these cases, we do have the armor, though. We do have Balance of Justice, and we are playing to hold the lines as well. Um, right now, once again, not the best hand. Uh, we should just be blocking. Um, it's important here to not overcommit on the block. So we do want to keep some in case he will send a CNC or a send packing. Um, the flip side of that is, of course, that there always can be this uh, cast bones, and now we kind of um, while well, stranded on one card more than we would have liked to have, so yeah. Um, there was the option to block three more, but I would still not, have, um, say we, we played this. Ah, uh, to be fair, actually we, we weren't like, um, necessarily, um, well let's say the Blessing of a Cold wasn't very important to us there, so we could have just blocked one more card on the East Drake, and then if push comes to shove, we can just block with the Runeshan Generator. Um, well, now Caillou will have a rather strong turn with all these tokens set up. We, on the other hand, don't have anything uh, that we want to like keep, so we can just block with everything we have. And the Rita runes, um, we do actually not want to block with, because, okay, well, we get two life more right now if we would have blocked with that, and... The rune chance won't be as important because we already have these um, these six tokens that um, are most important to us. But we're playing rune blood barrier, and whenever rune blood barrier is in the our arena, and instead of taking damage, we would lose a rune chant. So making three more rune chants here can equal three life. So I'd rather make those instead of blocking two here. And now we draw a very strong hand. We have the Arknet Ascendancy, which just got intimidated. We have the buff and the blue to go with it. And if KO wasn't putting on as much pressure as he is right now, we could even like use our Tunic Counter, play the Come to Fight, and even the Sonata Galaxia before that. Um, unfortunately for us, KO does have a power turn into our very strong hand. So we either take lots of damage or we block with it and wait for the next hand and to basically get the the positives out of both sides i'm using the balance of justice right now 
Um, and now once again we have it's this um, struggling point of is there a sand pegging coming? Is there a CNC coming? We definitely need the blue card in our hand and we could get rid of the other three though ideally because he does have a lot of armor we want to send two buffs so I do want to keep the come to fight and I don't really want to block with the galaxia either so I think for now I'm just keeping the sand completely and we'll take the five more damage because each of our cards will represent a lot more value on offense And fortunately for us, that's it with Caius' power turn, and we will be able to just play our six-card hand here. Now to the keen um, eye, it won't get unnoticed that go unnoticed that uh, Kayo is at 40 HP right now with six mites and an agility token, and we are at 10. Um, but I, I actually wouldn't really mind this situation at all in like any tournament. Because as you just, yeah, as you just saw, we just now played the six card hand. We're coming in with 14 dominate and a, and 20 rune chance to go with that. And we will make at least two and more like, no, at least four actually. And more likely even more uh, at the back of that. Which basically means even if he blocks everything, we are nearly equal. And actually we are equal in, in terms of rune chance and life combined and normally rune chants are even a little bit above the just the life value okay so Kayo decides to go for a more defensive approach here which I wouldn't say is wrong because usually all the most tens of Viserai in this archetype um, just want to block so if he was to keep a full hand here um, we just wouldn't mind we would, would block anyways and this way, if he just locks his whole hand and lets us get stranded on four cards we can't use, um, that might just be more beneficial for him. Now he wants to get as much damage out of this Ascendancy as possible because it reads that every damage it deals gets us one rune shot back. Um, well, fortunately for us, he doesn't put his flashback in there. So we deal two more damage and get two more rune shots back. And now, okay, he has, you know, six mites and picking coming in for 12, but we have the rune blood barrier on the field. We have 12 rune chance, so we can just let that get eaten up completely by our, by our tokens. Of course, um, that's not necessary because we do have good blocking cards. I think what we want to do here is... Mm, okay, now in, in hindsight, I wouldn't mind keeping the come to fight. But okay, actually, I might. I was probably really smart here, and just you know, okay, I don't need to come to fight because I have enough buffs in my deck left, so I can just draw into a stronger buff. Um, I don't need the looming doom. That's just a blocking card in this matchup, and we don't need the incantation because we have more than enough rune chance. We can keep this reduced to rune chance to make Caius turns more awkward. He won't be allowed to play pulping as long as we have an arsenal card. And we will, on a big turn of his, be able to get more damage out. And if we draw a very good hand, we will also be able to keep it because we have that extra block in our arsenal. Now, of course, we draw another direct, so we're just fine drawing one. And then we can actually grab another Runeblood Barrier off of the become the Arknight and play it with the Arknight chart. So once again, we'll translate our rune chance into life, into HP. And even though KO might have a bigger turn with the agility token, we're completely fine with that because he won't be able to threaten lethal at all. And as I've been saying before, we do have some more buffs. So we draw into the next Arknight Ascendancy with a buff. 
and even the Mordred Tide and the Incantation. Though, as I said, we have enough Ruin Chance, we are happy to block with those. Um, we just need to make sure we can pay for the Arknet Ascendancy. Um, it costs 6 and 1 less for every Rune Chance, so we either keep the Tunic Counter and go down to 5 Rune Chance, or we um, play 2 cards in our turn before the Arknet Ascendancy, so Viserai makes a, an extra Rune Chant. All of this is possible. Also, I want to make sure to cash in that Bloodied Oval or Shield right now, because after the next turn it's possible that Kayo will be lower than us. Okay, now coming in for 8. So we could block with the Mortal Tide and the Sink below. Go to 7 Rune Chance and just, you know, play the Incantation. Send Reckoning and Ascendancy. Uh, we could also keep the Sink below, just block with the Mortal Tide. Mm, no, actually that doesn't. That doesn't add up. We... Oh no, right, no. If we block with Sink below, then it's the only block we really need because we can play Mortal Tide Incantation and Reckoning make a total of 8 rune chance. Right, 2 from the Incantation, 2 more from the Reckoning. And now Ascendancy will come in with 8 rune chance and 8 dominate physical. Make at least 2, more likely 4 rune chance on the back of it. And then the incantation will give us a an, an extra rune chant every turn of three turns now. And all of a sudden we are ahead in life with a quite um good amount of rune chants. I believe we still have one rune blood barrier left. So what I'm thinking here is we need to check how many buffs are out, there's two slogisms out, I believe two come to fights. Uh, we should still have one runic reckoning and one slogism in the deck, no actually two runic reckonings and one slogism. So what I'm thinking is block with the... Hmm. We need we need the rattle bones in our arsenal actually to fetch out an attack um, in our next turn or the one after that so we block with the direct and the runic reckoning here. Play Sonata for our um, last rune blood barrier, so we're safe in the next turn. And then we can see how, how to finish that game up. There's also an argument to be made to just um, go for even more rune chance here. Um, screw the prevention and just say, okay, I can block with my armor and three hand cards and survive the next turn anyways. I believe the way I played it here is the more safe route though. And once again, I would just not overblock on the first attack, see what's, what else is coming. Uh, Scap skins right here. I can see how Kayo feels under pressure, obviously. If there was... Hmm. No, actually there is not really... If he's sending 6, there's no real chance for us to send a ninth blade. So an attack that's coming in for 9 for the cost of 0 with 9 rune chance. But... He doesn't know. We could have one in the arsenal. So he's, he's kind of scared. He feels like he has to convert his whole hand and... Finally for once the KO gets unlucky and as a result of that <laughs> um, quits which is uh, understandable I'm even okay if he if he rolls a 4 here the game could get dicey we basically say okay take 6 rune chance off then block another 6 on the next one with the read runes and the incantation we go up to 6 rune chance again in his next turn I think with the hand he presents us yeah right with the hand he presents us he can't generate a, an agility token for the next turn so we are very likely to just keep the cards we want in our next hand and those are that there's there are ninth, ninth blades missing still in our deck so we either draw into them and throw a really big attack at them 
or we get another buff to send and see. We can also finish the game off with the Looming Doom. All these things um, are possible at this point and while these endgames can get dicey against KO, we are usually still favored in a position like this and I'm very positive that um, either die roll uh, wouldn't have really mattered for him here. So anyway, that's uh, that's Total Burst vs. Rai, very fun deck in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed it too. If there are any questions, please leave them below and I see you next time.